Hi everyone, I'm Mr. Milestone and my channel is all about finding your passion, fulfilling your potential and achieving your goals. In this video, I'll talk you through how I went from being a kid with low confidence and skills to a leader and now head of the department at a multi-billion dollar firm. Stick your chest out, yeah. If you're interested in being inspired, I'll be posting videos weekly, so subscribe below to follow my journey and hopefully you'll be inspired too. My family moved to the UK from Somaliland about 35 years ago and growing up in the UK was a really interesting experience for me and my siblings. We lived in a three bed flat and there was about seven of us so it was quite packed. At the time I didn't really see it as a negative. I don't feel that affected me. I just thought this was normal because I'd not seen anything else. I was very lucky though that I had very supportive parents and they always used to feed my imagination. They always used to make me believe in myself and that support was vital. Growing up, going to primary school was great, made loads of friends from many different backgrounds. And one thing that really resonated with me at that young age was superhero stories. So I love superheroes. I watched all the usual Superman, Spider-Man, X-Men, you name it. And the reason I feel they resonated with me because the stories were always the same at the core. So there'd be a kid that had to overcome many hardships. They were kind of a loser. They didn't have much going for them and they had to overcome multiple multiple hardships that eventually led them to being their own superhero, so their ideal version of themselves. And when they became a superhero, they inspired others and changed the world for the better. So those stories really resonated with me. As a young kid, I wasn't very skilled. There wasn't many things I'd say I was good at. I was quite shy in fact and quite nervous to try new things because I kept failing and quite often. So these stories really spoke to me because I felt like I could eventually become my own superhero if I continued to try and overcome these multiple hardships. One other thing that really stood out for me during my early ages was video games. So I used to play a lot of video games. That really helped me open up my creativity at a young age. It allowed me to learn new words because a lot of these video games at the time had very complex words. So I was learning new vocabulary and it was helping me with my studies and also by these gaming magazines. So some of you might remember you get these gaming magazines, you get like a little demo disc with like five, six games on them and I used to love them. So one for the demos because I'd play them for weeks, months on end. I'd act like they were a real game uh, because obviously we didn't have the, the most money at that time. So those demo discs were gold. And by reading these magazines, I my English got really, really good in primary school. So I think there was one point when I was in year six, I did really well on my SATs and my English teacher at the time was very surprised. Looking back at it now, I was happy at the time, but it was quite condescending because why couldn't I achieve these things? I don't feel like I had a teacher that believed in me. And I'm, I'm sure many of you can relate to that. Having teachers that don't really believe in you can really affect you growing up and your self-belief. There was one incident with the same teacher whereby we had two kids come into our class. You know how it goes. Two misbehaving kids get sent to another class, get told to stand in a corner. Our teacher at the time pulled us all together, the whole class, and said, what do you think these two kids have in common? And we all said, as innocent kids, they're naughty, they're misbehaving, they're being disruptive. The teacher at the time said, no, it's because they're both black. Now, just imagine a classroom of innocent kids nine, 10 years old, hearing this from your teacher. That's something that stuck with me and it's something that I've never forgot. That hit me hard. It hit a lot of the kids in the class hard because at that age, you don't see race, you don't see color. We're all just kids. We wanna play together and have fun. So that, among many other things, had a really negative effect on my own self-belief at the time. What really continued to help me was the belief of my parents and my fixation with superhero stories continued to grow and grow and grow and I really hope that that would be me in the future. Going on to high school, that was a great experience for me. I've made a lot of great friends that I've still got to this day. Again, it wasn't the best high school. I remember walking in on my first day in year seven, so I was 11 years old and the teacher had a black eye because they got punched by a student. 
So probably not the best environment to learn in, but it helped me build character. So just take the positives out of any, any bad situation that you're in. Whilst I was in high school, I kind of came to the frank realization that I wasn't really good at anything, to be honest. There wasn't any one area where I stood out that I really excelled in. I wasn't good at sports, really. I wasn't the best academically. I was all right, I was doing okay. One thing that did help me towards the late years of high school was I had a few teachers that really believed in me, that really helped push me on. And in particular, my English and my math teacher really helped me because they helped me flourish in those two subjects. And I ended up doing decent at GCSE level. I was quite proud of what I achieved in the end but I definitely would have achieved more if I had teachers that believed in me throughout that journey that and that's quite sad thinking back now but thankfully it's not held me back I remember developing a persona as more of the funny guy or the, the kind of the class clown and the nice person and that's kind of how I defined myself at high school then I went on to college and did my A levels thankfully I passed all of my A levels and got accepted into my first choice university so that was a really big win for me. And when picking my course for uni, I thought, well, business because money, right? And then within that, I said, what skills do I have that would work well in a specific area of business? So finance was out the window. I was never the best with numbers, but marketing really stood out to me because I thought, well, I'm quite sociable. I like to organize events. I'm quite organized. I love being creative. So I went for marketing as my university course and university was where I really started developing my leadership skills and qualities. I went out of my comfort zone. I went to a uni that no, none of my friends were really going to because I thought this was a great opportunity to reshape myself and who I am. I lived out in dorms as well, so that was a new experience for me to be responsible for myself. And I ended up building a really good group of friends there. And university for me was where I really started building my leadership qualities. So I realized people liked it when I led on group assignments. I realized I was quite good at it. So I continued to do that for pretty much all of my university assignments, I led the group work. I was the team leader and I started to grow into this role and really, really begun to enjoy it. I think what happened to me there was I realized that I failed so much early on in my life that I kind of became numb to failure. So I wasn't scared to fail because it happened to me so many times. And later in life, this actually started to benefit me. I was happy to take the risk of being a leader because I thought, hey, if I fail, it's just another failure. All that experience of failing actually led me to being a good leader because I wasn't afraid to take risk at the right time and lead the team in the direction I thought was best based on the experience I'd gained from my failures. Perhaps also here, these superhero stories continue to inspire me because I was facing this hardship and I thought this is just my journey to become my own superhero. So university was great for me and it really helped me build my confidence in business, in presenting, in leading. However, there was another area I wasn't quite as confident. So I was quite a big guy at university and not in a good way. I actually tackled this, well, hopefully you can see I've tackled this now. If you're interested in me sharing my weight loss journey, please let me know in the comments below and I'll follow up with the video if there are enough comments asking for that. But back to university, so I ended up doing really well, got a 2-1, I was so proud. I also did like a one year work placement where I worked at a company for a year during my course in marketing and that really helped me grow and build my confidence and really solidify all the things that I learned at university in a real business. So that was brilliant for me. And in fact, looking back now, that's probably one of the times where I had the most disposable income. I was working at my work placement for a year where I was getting paid. I think I was getting paid 16 grand a year for that role. Then I also worked at HMV on the weekends during that time. And that was about seven pounds an hour. And I also worked at Wembley Stadium on match days for, and that was £10 an hour. And I'd do that after I'd finished my work placement. So I was getting a lot of money then. And that was a time where I had very little responsibilities. I was living at home. I didn't have much bills to pay. So I was living the high life. And 
if I could advise myself back then, now I'd say save your money up because I don't know where all of that went. After uni, I really struggled to find a job. It was actually during the financial crash, which was about 10 years ago now, I think, and jobs were very hard to come by. Thankfully, I secured a internship that would lead to a full-time job if I was successful after a three month period. So I ended up doing well, getting the full-time job and I was really thrilled. It was in marketing, the field that I studied, I was doing everything that I loved, brilliant. However, unfortunately, I had a terrible boss and the company had a really toxic work culture where I couldn't really thrive grow or be creative and I wasn't supported in any way, shape or form. So that was a really bad experience for me. I ended up leaving after a year because it took a really big toll on my mental health. I wasn't feeling myself, I wasn't feeling good, I wasn't feeling happy. And if you're not feeling happy, that's the time to leave. So I left and looking back now, actually, that's probably one of the best decisions I've ever made in my life because during that few months that I took out, I got a lot more close to my religion. I became a lot more health conscious. So I started exercising. I was eating much healthier. Eventually, I think after a few months, I secured another role at a company whereby I had a brilliant boss. There was a really supportive team there. We had a fantastic culture and I ended up staying there for three years as I was able to be very creative, to grow, to try new things, take on a lot of responsibility as it was a startup. So that was great for me and I loved it. After three years there, I moved on to another company and it was a managerial role. So my first manager role as a professional and that was great. It was a startup that was based in France, launching in the UK, which was great because I went back and forth in the Eurostar and you know, that I just felt like a real boss at the time, to be fair. So that was a really great experience with a really good team there. And I got to create a marketing strategy and plan from scratch and own that. So that was me really leading. And we had two people in the team at the time that I led. So I loved it. It was a really great and enjoyable experience for me. Fast forward another year, I took another man manager job at a much bigger firm with a big bump in salary that allowed me to work with teams based in the US and it was more of a global organization. So it looked really good on my CV and that was another great experience. And I stayed there for around a year and a half. I decided to leave when another interesting opportunity came up. So if you remember earlier, I said I was really into video games and this company was a video game publisher that offered me a head of marketing position. So this was kind of a dream for me at the time. It was doing something that I loved. I had a much more senior title. I had a big bump in salary. Plus it was an area that I enjoy, gaming. So it was a no brainer, right? Uh -uh. After joining, I found out that the company was actually involved in fraudulent activity and it wasn't all it seemed to be. So that was a big blow to me. The company ended up folding after a few months and I was jobless. I had to go back on the job market looking for a new role. And that was a big lesson for me. Essentially, I learned that before applying to any job, do your research into the company. And what helped me through this really difficult period of being let go from my job was, was my wonderful wife. She was a great support to me. She was my rock. She never stopped believing in me and what I was doing. And that really gave me a massive boost to go on there, get back on the market and get an even better role. And that's what I ended up doing. So after three long months searching for a new role, I found one at a multi-billion dollar global firm that wanted me to join as their head of marketing and I was given the opportunity to shape the strategy, lead a team and really go out there and be creative and be entrepreneurial. So that was amazing for me. I've been there for now three years and I'm still there to this day. And that's because I'm really enjoying what I'm doing. There's a really wonderful 
culture there. The team is great. I've been blessed with many great bosses there. I've also thankfully got two promotions while I've been there. So I've been promoted every single year, which is fantastic. And I'm enjoying what I do. I've also been so lucky to meet so many inspirational people within the company that I learn from, that I observe. And that's something that you can't really buy. So what all these experiences did for me was really help me to become a leader, to be more confident in myself, to not be afraid to take risks, to research the right things at the right time and really bet on myself no matter what and continue to look for opportunities to grow in the right way. As I've become more of an experienced uh, professional, I've started mentoring people, giving back. That's something that's very beneficial. It's something that I never had access to and it's very rewarding for me. I also lead our employee resource group that's for ethnic minorities and different faith groups because they are two really important areas to me as a black man and as a Muslim. They are two incredibly important areas to me. So I want to improve opportunities for people from underprivileged and underrepresented communities. So it was a really long road for me, but all the bumps along the way helped me to grow, to become a better person, a better leader, and develop all the skills I needed to succeed. And if you're really interested in how to have a successful career, I've got another video about this specifically, so please go and watch that as well, as you'll find those tips very, very beneficial. So be resilient, and believe in yourself because it might take long, you might have many bumps along the way, but you can do it, keep your goal in mind, and if you do that, nothing will stop you. So thanks for watching, hopefully my journey can inspire you as well. If you enjoyed it, please like, and if you haven't already, subscribe, and together, let's chase our goal!